Retail investors around the world turn on the financial news channels and they listen to strategists they've never met. They read newsletters written by writers who've never managed money. Young investors scour Reddit chat boards for ideas from people that have no names. And we often subscribe to investor services, sometimes for entertainment, but most often times with the hopes of improving our investment returns. Most often we are presented with people's individual opinion, not based on research or facts. People we've never met, but who are presenting as experts in their field. How often has that worked out for you and your portfolio? I mean, everyone has the right to voice their opinion about the stock and bond markets or our economy, but how often has listening to these opinions helped your portfolio? As modern day investors, we're bombarded with noise because information now is readily available at our fingertips, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by way of smartphones and computers. Even with all this information available, remember, there are no guarantees in the public stock and bond markets. Before we get into this week's topic, move lower, stocks higher, Yes, even bond volatility is looking lower, not higher, and that's a good thing for your portfolio. Please take a moment to click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you'll be alerted when our team uploads our latest content. We do have a new location for our Oak Harvest investment-oriented content. You can find it by typing Stock Talk with Chris in the Google search window or going to Oak Harvest YouTube channel and clicking on the drop-down tab labeled Channels and clicking on Stock Talk with Chris. U.S. debt default concerns, geopolitical strife domestically and globally, bank runs in Europe and regional bank runs here in the U.S. I've never heard so many people so uniformly negative and confident in their economic opinions of forthcoming doom as I have this year. Ignore the fact that almost all of them have been calling for doom for most of their careers and have been calling for an impending recession since the summer of 2022. Viewers, it's 2023 and it's May and we're still waiting. Many of those selling this story of doom also like to discuss market volatility. Against that backdrop, we touched on this subject of declining stock market volatility over the last nine months in our April 28th video titled, Volatility Collapsing? Inconceivable. Many strategists postings and research pieces this year have tried comparing equity and bond market volatility. They've run comparisons of the spot VIX index versus the Merrill Lynch Treasury Bond Market Volatility Index. That's the MOVE index. These comparisons have almost been universally biased bearishly in their views. Stock volatility is broken, they say. Look at how high bond volatility is. Don't buy stocks, they warn. And yet, stock volatility has been declining all year and against the backdrop of cyclical declining implied and realized stock volatility since last May, June, 2022. The trend in both implied and realized stock volatility in stocks has been down for over nine months now. Investors, here's the current chart of the MOVE index, an index we've discussed previously. It's a Bank America index that measures treasury bond market volatility. We like to follow this index as a measure of stress in the collateral markets. Why? Because it's the safest and most liquid collateral in the world. U.S. Treasury volatility is trending higher. It forces leveraged players to sell assets, whether they want to or not. Conversely, if the safest and most liquid collateral in the world, U.S. Treasury volatility is trending lower, hedge funds and those borrowing money seem calmer waters. The lower collateral volatility incents higher margin borrowing balances. It no longer forces leveraged players to sell assets, whether they want to or not. They exhale first and start slowly returning to buy and levering up their portfolios. Much as stock volatility peaked quarters ago, bond volatility looks to have now topped out and it's close to breaking back below its 50 week moving average. This moving average has historically been bullish for stocks. The move index is now hovering right above this important level, but yes, it's looking like it wants to break lower, not higher, even against all the negative news surrounding the debt default timeline. And investors, if and when this chart breaks lower, expect the equity markets to miraculously rally against the bewilderment of the bearish masses on TV. Investors, when the economists in DC and strategists on TV start talking uniformly about recessions or chronic inflation, try as you must, as much as you can, to walk away and take a deep breath. The consensus is almost never correct. And when it comes to asset allocation changes, most of the time, the best action is no action, as this allocation was presumably set with a multi-year time horizon. The best time to make changes to your asset allocation is when your emotions are low and market volatility is low as well. Viewers, there is no perfect investment philosophy. There is no perfect trading tool that is all weather, outperforming every stock cycle or every economic environment. At Oak Harvest, we have many tools that our advisors use to help our clients meet their retirement goals and objectives. Some of these tools are market-based, and some are insurance-based, but we can meet your retirement goals with a combination of both. The future and stock markets are always uncertain. That's why our retirement planning teams plan for your retirement needs first, 
and your agreed second. Give us a call to speak to an advisor and let us help you craft a financial plan that helps you meet your retirement goals. Call us here at 877-896-0040 and schedule an advisor consultation. We're here to help you on your financial journey into and through your retirement years. For myself and the whole team here at Oak Harvest, have a blessed weekend.